speak in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Today we have the Gospel reading about how a blind man was given his sight by a miracle of our Lord. It is very significant that this incident is recorded in all the four Gospels and there must have been many other healings of this sort during the course of our Lord's ministry but this is a special one. That is why it is recorded by each of the evangelists. And in St Mark's Gospel, the blind man is named as Bartimaeus, blind Bartimaeus. And it's my normal practice to think about the Gospel for the coming Sunday, starting on the following earlier Monday. So I, I take about a week to think about my coming um, address for the following Sunday and during the course of this last week as I read the gospel the verse from Isaiah kept coming into my mind they have eyes and see not ears have they and hear not, lest they repent and turn to God. Why did that verse keep coming into my mind in relation to this Gospel reading? 
And I thought to myself, looking at the world as it is today, many people have eyes that they do not see. Many people have ears that they do not hear. So although they have physical sight, they are blind to spiritual truths. And though they have ears to hear, I hear many things in the world and a great deal of hubbub, they do not hear the gospel or refuse to hear it lest they repent and turn to God. So the situation in which we are in with this very secular world was very familiar to the prophet Isaiah who spoke these things 700 years before our Lord came. So it is a very common experience of people with spiritual understanding to grieve over the state of the majority who have ears to hear and hear not and eyes to see and see not. So going back to blind Bartimaeus in the Gospel, we do not know how many years he had been blind spiritually, uh, physically but he was not blind spiritually he heard the great hubbub going by and the people told him that it was Jesus of Nazareth who was passing by and he immediately cried out, knowing who he was, Jesus for the David. Something in the heart of blind Bartimaeus told him that this man, Jesus of Nazareth, must be the long expected Messiah. And he cried out more enthusiastically, Jesus, son of David, have mercy upon me. His declaration of the truth was embarrassing to the crowd who were possessing eyes to see with, but they were blind because this man, Jesus of Nazareth, was indeed the long expected Messiah. Blind Bartimaeus knew who it was and his enthusiastic expression of faith was an embarrassment. So the crowd told him to shut up, we don't want to hear any more of this. But the more they told him to shut up, the more enthusiastically he cried out, Jesus, son of David, have mercy upon me. And by this time the Lord had reached him and he asked the disciples to bring him forward and when blind Bartimaeus was in front of our Lord, the Lord said to him, what do you desire? Of course the Lord knew what he desired. But this was a means by which he could bring about a humble expression of need. Although blind Bartimaeus had an inner spiritual sight, he desired his physical sight and the Lord blessed him and gave him his sight and when 
blind Bartimaeus saw everything around him, he rejoiced and gave thanks to God. So what are the circumstances in our modern world which prevent people thinking they have physical sight and that's enough? What's preventing them from seeing spiritual truths? All we can say is, and I think we are at one, not only with blind Bartimaeus, but also the prophet Isaiah, who said, Eyes have they and see not, ears have they and hear not, lest they repent and come to God. This is the issue. The majority of people wish to go about their daily lives without any reference to God because it is inconvenient. <coughs> reference to God is an embarrassment and so they go along without any perception of spiritual truth. Their need for God. And so all we can do as Orthodox Christians is in our own <coughs> lives, especially in this Nativity fast, or the fast of Advent, to pay a deeper attention to the spiritual truths which the Lord has revealed to us in his mercy for our spiritual benefit and also to be constant in our faithfulness and loyalty to him and more out of love for him so that by our witness and example those people in the world who have eyes and see not will follow our example God willing so we can be the means by which their spiritual sight is revealed and their spiritual sight enables them to come to a knowledge of God. This is why I think the evangelists were intent on putting this gospel story, the healing of the blind man, into their gospel. The spiritual truth was that this blind man did have an inner spiritual sight, even though he did not have physical sight. And he endured that blindness for a period of time until Jesus came and healed him and the gospel said made him well. That means whole and complete. So by this wonderful healing, blind Martimaeus not only had his physical sight, but also his inner sight was blessed and fulfilled. He had come to a knowledge of the truth because the Lord is truth in the flesh. And also today, we commemorate the Holy Prophet Zephaniah. Zephaniah is one of the, what we call the minor prophets. 
his prophecy in the Old Testament only consists of three short chapters. But he also is a revelation to us of the truth. The first chapter in his book tells of the anguish of God for the waywardness of his people, their wickedness and sinfulness and living their lives without any reference to the covenant of God which their forefathers had made at the time of Moses. They had forgotten what God had done for them. They had adopted the ways of the heathen and the godless. So Zephaniah communicated this anguish of God. The second chapter talks about his judgment upon the people of Israel and the surrounding nations. And the third chapter begins, Rejoice, daughter of Zion, because as a result of God's judgment upon his people, a faithful remnant will be revealed and his covenant renewed. And that would be a time not of anguish and heartbreak and sorrow, it would be a time of joy. And that is what the time of our Lord is about, a time of joy and fulfilment and a sense of having God with us and what is more important our being conscious of the Lord's presence which although requires a sense of humility and repentance also gives to us a sense of fulfilment because we shall be living our lives in the way that the Lord desires and that is the most fulfilling thing which can be experienced. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.